You can't have one anatomic variant and not expect another part of the body to make an adaptive change. And, and let me just ask this, how many of you know what a four foot varus is? One, two, three, maybe four or five. Okay, so um, if you know what a four foot varus is, then you know that if that person also embraces natural running or chi running, that in a four foot varus, they could develop some serious problems in the foot if they're into a minimalistic sh shoe. So I hope that what I give you today is information to make you more knowledgeable so that you can help your runners, your clients, make smarter choices, reduce their injuries, get them in the right shoe, educate them and your staff so that you get return clients back into your stores, back into your facilities. Um, so, uh, if you don't know what a four-foot varus is and you don't know what chi running is or you don't know what pose running is or you don't know what natural running is, then or if you've got a client who's a heel striker, you're not going to know the risk factors for that client. Thus, you may put them in the wrong shoe. You may get a client returning to return a shoe or get them returning very angrily to return a shoe, asking them, why didn't this shoe work? Why did your store prescribe this shoe? What shoe should I be in? My goal is to always, and, and I work with uh, all kinds of athletes, from triathletes to uh, category one bikers, to Olympic athletes, to uh, all American uh, runners. And so a lot of people come, for example, a couple weeks ago I had a lady, lady fly in from New York just to get a shoe fit by me. She's a marathoner and she's had, she came with a bag of orthotics and a ton of different shoes. And she's got all of these problems. and. Uh, I saw her twice, and she's already running again, and she has no problems. The problem was, one, she didn't need orthotic. Two, she was using the wrong running style for her foot type, and she was in the wrong shoe. As soon as I got her in the right shoe, had her change her running style, got rid of the orthotics, after two visits, just twice, she's fine, and she's running again, and she's happier. That, and she, this has been going on for about 10 years. So if you know what you've got coming in, you know that you've got a shoe that can change a person's anatomy, uh, the function of the anatomy in the shoe, um, but also realize that the anatomy can change the function of the shoe. It's a two-way street. So all too frequently we put something in the shoe, an orthotic, an insert, and we modify the mechanics in the shoe, but you change the way the shoe was designed. So you've got to realize that every time you make an adaptive change to the shoe, you're going to ask them to make an adaptive change mechanically. And that's a problem because the shoes are designed around anatomic normal. There's a small percentage. Uh, take 50%, 10 standard, uh, standard deviation on either side. Most shoes are fit around that middle 40 to 60 percentile. Well, what about the people on the outside, which is the majority? Okay, shoes are designed around a normal, neutral anatomic foot. Okay, that's not a four foot varus, that's not a four foot valgus, that's not a rear foot varus, that's not a rear foot valgus. That doesn't include tibial torsion, genuvalgum. We'll look at all these things. I know I'm throwing out some big terms, but I want you guys to understand those things because these shoes are driven around norm and most of the people that come in are not normal, okay? There's good things in every product, but there's also some caveats of buyer beware. And if you know what those things are and you come in as a more informed consumer or client, you're going to go into those products and see where you can use them for your clients and see when maybe that isn't the right choice. Okay, so you've got a lot of choices. You've got shod, unshod, and shoes, un no shoes. You've got dual density shoes, neutral or cushion, trainer, minimalistic shoes, barefoot, more cushion, less cushion. There's a lot of choices out there for your clients, but also for you. And um, moving forward, you need to understand that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And if you're trying to tailor make a program in your store or for your clients or for patients, uh, to a, a program and you realize there's going to be people on the fringes that aren't going to fit in that program and are going to actually run into problems and injuries. So, uh, The majority of African American feet are flatter. They don't have as high an arch. And just because the arch is low does not mean that that foot is incompetent and weak. It's covering more surface area. 
Um, just because a foot is flat does not mean that it needs an orthotic and does not need a stability shoe, okay? So in other words, what you see is not in fact what you get. And I get this a lot when I teach at the uh, uh, postgraduate uh, level for the doctors is a lot of them want to have foot scanners and foot screeners and digital video on there. And the problem is, and, and, and I hope if you take one thing away from here, if you've got one of these in your store, use it. But listen to what I have to say right now. What you're seeing is your client's ability to use what is working on the scanner or in the video. It doesn't tell you what's wrong. It tells you what they are doing with what is working. The human body wants to make an adaptive change to continue the activity. It needs to eat, it needs to procreate, it needs to do all of these things, so it finds a way. You develop a bunion, you develop plantar fasciitis, but you still go to work, you still go to the bathroom, and you still eat, okay? So what you see on a video is you see a patient, so for example, I'll get someone that comes in, they've got a video and they show me, they put it in my computer, because I know what they're gonna say, look, I'm pronating on the right and I need a stability shoe, and I said, well, you're pronating on the right, but that doesn't tell me why you're pronating. Do you have a weak intrinsics? Is your quadratus planti weak? Is your long flexor weak? Are you overcompensating because of lack of internal hip rotation? And so you don't have internal hip rotation to move across that foot, and so because you hit a limitation, there's no more internal rotation, you start to pronate heavily more through the foot to make up for what you should have been doing up here. The body has a cascade of needs, and it's, a, it's one of these, if you can't do it, please push it to the next body part, and that's where a lot of injuries occur. It's an adaptive system. It will find a way to move from A to B. I tell a lot of clients who come in with a true, what looks like a true anatomic short leg, and I said, wow, it's amazing that you walk down that hallway straight, because theoretically, you've got a short leg, you should walk in a circle if I gave you a room big enough, right? <laughs> Truly, you should. You will start to walk in a circle. And so what you see is the client turn out the foot because by turning the foot out into external rotation, it makes the leg a little bit longer. But they still walk from A to B because they torque the pelvis and they've moved differently through the other body parts to move in a straight line. You adapt, okay? It leads to some of these injuries. So it doesn't mean because they are uh, pronating more on that foot because it's a shorter leg or supinating more on that leg because it's a shorter leg that they need a certain shoe. So what you see on a video is not what they need. It's what the body is doing with what is working. Thank God it's working. So what you need to do, and here's where I find, uh, here's my greatest problem in giving this type of a lecture. You guys need to be able to diagnose what is wor not working and fix it in order to give them the right shoe. That's the huge limitation, right? But you guys can't do that because that would be treating without a license. And God knows there's enough shoe stores that are doing that already, you know? Um, they're making diagnosis off of, their, off of their video. They're making diagnoses off of their foot scanners, okay? And you can't do that. Um, if someone is pronating more in a foot, they may be doing that because they need to, because they're not doing something else somewhere else. And so why do you want to block that out with an orthotic or a high-end stability shoe? Now you, now you just told that foot, I'm not going to let you pronate, but the foot's saying, you don't understand. I needed to do that because you don't have enough internal hip rotation or you don't have enough hip extension. So what have you done? Maybe you just made the client worse instead of better. And now they come in and they start, start to develop IT band syndrome because instead of moving through that foot, they're moving around it now, okay? So you have to understand that every adaptive change that you guys see, see, I look at it as a shoe, I look at a shoe as an orthotic. It is something that is changing their mechanics. I love this minimalistic footwear trend because it is adding less aggressive changes to the foot anatomy. So that means what you're getting is a more pure gait or running. The problem is, is do you have the anatomy to wear that shoe without a consequence? Maybe you shouldn't be running, you know? Maybe you should be a, uh, a carpet weaver or something like that where you sit down all day long.